Okay, for our first spooky treat, we are going to need marshmallows and it's best if you have them in this kind of shape and white ones are desirable for this look you or this recipe you need some water some brownie pieces some icing sugar and a black icing pen okay this is literally like the easiest thing all you need to do is take some icing pop it on the brownie which will help the marshmallow stick then pop the marshmallow on top so grab your icing pen and then you can draw on a little face onto the marshmallow and it's as easy as that, and then you can do that with all the others. the finished ghosts super super easy super quick but they are so cute for our second recipe this is super super simple all you need is 100 grams of milk chocolate 100 grams of white chocolate make sure those are in glass bowls because we're going to be melting them and then some um like molds to pop those in okay for the next step you need to melt the chocolate so you can do that in whatever way is easiest to you Personally, I like this method of having boiling water in the pan underneath and then popping the glass bowl on top. As you can see, that white chocolate is already starting to melt. Once the chocolate is melted, you can begin spooning the chocolate into the moulds and pop in a mixture of milk and white chocolate in there so you get a really cool um, effect on the chocolate. I only melted enough chocolate to make nine little chocolates so hopefully these are going to come out well I've never done this one before so hopefully they'll be okay but all you need to do now is pop that in the fridge and leave those to cool I'm not sure how long they'll take so I'll check in with you guys later so for our final recipe you're going to need about 75 grams of icing sugar I've added a little bit more because I like things really really sweet um, you're then going to need about 250 grams of flour or just plain flour, you don't need self-rising for this. Um, I think I have a little bit too much flour because I misread the scales so I'm just going to go with it. You need about, I think it's two teaspoons of vanilla essence, about two tablespoons of milk, I've got soy milk, and then you're going to need about 125 grams of butter and I've used vegan butter just to note that this would be a vegan recipe however icing sugar is not technically vegan i'm pretty sure i'd double check but i'm pretty sure it's not vegan to begin this recipe you're going to add together all the flour the sugar and the butter <laughs> And you need to mix this together with your fingers, rub it together to make fine breadcrumbs. I'm going to add my vanilla and my milk. It just needs to be mixed until it forms a dough such as this and then you're ready for the next stage.
Okay, so on a lightly floured surface, maybe I went a little bit overboard with the flour, you're going to need um, a rolling pin that's also been floured, don't forget that part. You're going to need a baking tray with greaseproof paper on to pop your biscuits on, and you're going to need whatever cookie cutters you will be using. I've got a witch's hat, a pumpkin, a black cat, and a bat, and these are from TK Maxx. Um, you can see those in my TK Maxx haul, which I posted earlier. So I'm going to grab my dough, pop that on, and I'm going to start rolling. Okay, so just to note, these cookies do not rise in the oven, so whatever um, width or thickness you cut them at is how they're going to stay. So keep that in mind when cutting. Okay, so I've run out of room on my baking tray, so uh, you could also make a second baking tray, but I'm probably just going to leave that. So, these are my cookies. Okay, so my cookies are all on there, um, on the trays, ready to go. I did end up using that last bit of batter or dough, whatever it's called. Um, so I'm going to pop these in my oven for 12 minutes and hopefully they should be done. I'm awful with cookies, I always burn them, so pray for blaze. Okay, so I kept my biscuits in for 12 minutes and um, this is how they look. They are slightly burnt towards these bottom edges, but that's fine because they're going to be decorated anyway. So it shouldn't be too bad. And that poor little cat has broken its tail, which is kind of sad, but you know what, I'm sure it will still be cute. <laughs> yeah, so the ones on the uh, lower shelf seem to cook better than the other ones, so maybe just keep that in mind, but yeah. So the next step is to decorate them, but I'm going to leave these to cool for 10-15 minutes before I start decorating. Okay, so my biscuits have cooled down and I'm ready to decorate them, so I've got some orange frosting, this was supposed to be black but it's come out more grey so that's annoying. I've got some coloured icing pens, some chocolate sprinkles and some edible eyes. Um, the shops near me were seriously lacking in Halloween baking goodies. Last year we had all kinds of cute little sprinkles and stuff but this year apparently not so I'm making do with the stuff that I have so I'm just going to get started and ice these biscuits. Okay, so here are the finished products of all of the um, recipes. So the first one here, the biscuits, um, I think they came out pretty well. I wish the black icing was more black than it actually is, but never mind. 
then we have our ghosty marshmallows there <laughs> i love the ones with the sad faces they just look so funny and then finally our little ghosty chocolates i think they came out really well they're very thick but i don't know it means there's more chocolate to enjoy these would be really good um, as like favors in goodie bags and stuff like that if you put them in little bags or something like that it would be very very cute 